Hello everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Hi, my name is Caitlin. I'm a senior at the University of South Florida in Tampa and I am studying environmental science and policy with a minor in bio. I am really excited to be talking to you guys today. These are my study tips for STEM students because I'm a STEM student myself. If you're wondering what is a STEM student, you're studying science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. So a little credibility, obviously I'm a senior, so I have over 100 credit hours. Um, I'm a STEM student, I have a 3.7 GPA, um, so I'm really happy about that. I worked really, really hard for it. So yeah, um, just take all of these notes with a grain of salt because everyone knows the best way to study for them. And sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error and failing multiple times. Guys, I've struggled for a really long time with this and I feel like I finally, finally understand it. College is hard, so let me make it easier for my STEM students by gifting you guys for Christmas my study tips. <laughs> Segment number one, of course, is my note-taking tips. So I kind of divide courses into two separate categories. You have your physics, calculus, statistics, chemistry, that type of stuff where it's more um, taking formulas and concepts and then applying those into equations to solve problems. Um, so you're more problem solving. And then you have your content-based courses like ecology, biology, um, history, um, English, stuff like that, where you're using more memorization, identification, probably using some flashcards there, writing a lot of essays maybe. It's more of a memorization tactic than anything else. Um, so that's kind of how I break those two up, just that you know how to study for each one. So for my math-based courses, I found that the best thing to do was to go over problems. A lot of the times, like I was provided with study guides or practice questions, I would take those practice questions, I would answer them, go to TA if I needed help, go to office hours if I needed help, um, teach myself it from online help. Um, but I would write it down and I would make sure that I understood it. Once I understood it, I would write it down again on a whiteboard, study with other people, or literally I would have a conversation with nobody and pretend to teach other people like I was the professor. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but there was a chart in elementary school in American schools where it was like one, two, three, or four. And if you were at like a level four of understanding, it meant that you could teach somebody else. So I think about that all the time in college about how when I'm at a level four of understanding, I'm able to do it myself and teach somebody else how to do it. And so I really held that with me. And that's something that I definitely use to study for those like math-based courses. But for all my content identification overload classes, which I would personally say are some of the hardest classes that you can take. For that, I love to use Notion and online note-taking apps. And I'll tell you why I love using typed notes. I'm a pretty fast typer and I find that this is helpful because PowerPoint slides from professors are really vague. It'll most likely be like a very general bullet point and then your professor will speak more and elaborate more on that bullet point. So that's why it's more important to attentively listen to what your professor is saying rather than take up all of your time handwriting what that one bullet point on the PowerPoint is saying. All that to say that if you can type it and it's faster for you to type, it's more important. Pay more attention to what your professor is saying rather than what those PowerPoint slides are saying because that's going to be important. Do I take from the textbook or do I take more from what my professor is saying to me? That's where you kind of have to figure out what does the syllabus say? Do I need to ask them, send them an email, something like that? Because I mean, they will help you out. They want you to pass. So following like taking the actual notes, using things like Quizlet to help you study, um, AI, which I'll talk about in a second. I feel like that's um, helpful for like those memorization types of content courses. Writing useful notes. This is more for my content-based courses because um, again, like I said, physics, chemistry, it is what it is. You know, you gotta just write what, what the concept is and what the formulas are. I mean, like it's that, like that's how to take useful notes for those courses. Um, <laughs> but for your content-based courses and your, um, not concept, your content-based courses, your memorization heavy courses, like I said, I'm gonna say this again and again, listen to what your professor is saying. Do not take your time on subjects in which you're more familiar with. You know, so if you learned something in a previous class that you carried with you and you know pretty well, don't waste your time studying that topic because if you already know it pretty well, maybe just review it and refresh, but spend your time on the new things, the new content that you're learning. 
use YouTube videos to help you out. Use headings in your notes. A lot of people don't use headings. So important, especially when you're reviewing quickly, you need to know not just like chapter 17, but like specific headings of like, why is the abysmal plain fine sediment filled? I don't know. <laughs> um, use something specific that catches your brain off guard. And then last but not least is my favorite study tip. This is something that got me through bio too, and I recommend to everybody is color coding your notes. I color coded my notes based off the chapter. So it would be like blue is chapter 17. Color coding can kind of help in your brain to organize and differentiate between chapters. That way you don't accidentally blur the lines of what chapter 16 and 17 are about when it comes time to take your exam. It can also help in active recall. I do believe that it does help in active recall to actually have colorful pages and that's why people use highlighters it's to highlight important content same thing with color coding your content it can be helpful to that degree as well now segment two is using ai when to use ai how to use ai I'll say from a personal standpoint that as somebody who's really tried to fiddle and use ai it is more helpful for those formula based things important in using like coding like Python, I think is like the most widely known coding software. I should learn it. Um, but if you are learning Python, it can really help you to fix bugs and stuff in your code um, and help you get working on that. Um, so using that without cheating can be helpful. It can generate study guides. It can help, you know, organize your essay better, give you new transition words to use, maybe um, give you more adjectives or change your grammar a little bit. Um, it's very helpful for that. Um, but I would say it's not quite advanced enough yet to replace going to lectures. So I wouldn't rely too heavily on AI just yet, but use it as a tool. Um, I love using ChatGPT and I love using Notebook LM, which is a Google-based AI, and it can help you to generate study guides based off of information that you provide it with. And it can also give you kind of like a back and forth podcast between two um, AI characters. Into some notes from a marine biology course. Cool. And uh, we're gonna uncover how these, you know, ocean animals thrive in like it's such a challenging environment. It really is amazing what these creatures can do. We like forget sometimes how hard it is to live underwater. Totally. So it's pretty cool, pretty scary, but I mean, it's there. Segment three, which is last and most important, is lifestyle choices. Eating, exercise, sleeping. I will beat it and repeat it in your head. Three most important things for being the best student that you can be. It's okay to let go sometimes. You, if you have 24 hours to study before an exam, definitely still try to study if you haven't started at all, but cut your losses at some point. Don't give up existing or give up living your life to study for 24 hours before that test because it's really not gonna work, okay? The truth is, is that your brain needs to learn information and read it about two to three times before it actually sticks in your brain. So it's really, really important to utilize this. Another psychology tip is that if you can choose your test room, take it in the same place you learned the information because you're often going to have better recall that way. Um, but again, lifestyle choices. Nothing can replace sleeping, eating well, or getting lots of exercise. I used to go on walks all last year when I lived on campus. I use the treadmill now. Highly wish I lived on campus just for the purpose of walking around campus and getting fresh air, seeing the sunset, and just kind of like debriefing after a really long day of studying and going to classes because it's exhausting to be a STEM student. It's exhausting to be a college student and to exist as a human being all at the same time. So it's very important that you are prioritizing yourself because you cannot be a good student if you are not first a good human being, which means a fully functioning human being. I remember that the day before my chem exam, I decided that instead of overly studying, which I had already been studying the few days prior, I was going to take a break and go to the zoo with my friend Cece and then study later that day. Taking that break and going to the zoo was one of the most fun things that I've ever done, riskiest, and I got an A minus in chem too, guys, <laughs> okay? I pulled off an A in chem, even though I didn't study, study, study until that final. So live your life, take a break, make yourself food, get water, get sleep. No test is worth your own mental health. It's not. A lot of employers looking at your resume, if you have above a 3.0, you're good. 
you don't have to stress too much about that. So if you're getting 80s and stuff on tests, you're fine. Calm down. It's going to be okay. Okay? Everyone's different. Some people are not good at physics. Some people are not good at chem. So if somebody gets an A and you get a B, that's okay. If you get a C, it's fine. It's okay. Passing is okay. Okay? C's get degrees and that is the truth. But the best thing that you can do as a STEM student is try your hardest to understand the content and to learn it and be the best student that you can be. But if being the best student you can be means that you're not at a 3.5 or above, that's okay. Because the best that you can do is your best. Give it your all, it's all you can do. And with that, I close this video. I absolutely hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any tips that you wanna share, or if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Um, yeah, I hope this wasn't too overwhelming. I've never done like a sit down video before. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.